hi, it's Tina here. Welcome back to this channel. Thank you so much for being here. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. If you have not subscribed to this channel, I would just greatly appreciate that subscription. It really helps this channel. It helps the the Google Analytics get this video to more people to see as well. And again, I just really greatly appreciate that subscription. If you do find this video useful, uh, helpful, you liked it, please do click on the like button at some point during the video. I greatly appreciate that as well. This particular video here is going to be an update of grants that I have applied for grants that I have just now come across that are new to me posting on this channel, as well as some of the other grants I've already covered, but are still available for you to apply for. So again, these are not grants for new companies that are just being developed. These are grants that are basically um, as a result of COVID-19. These grants are either ones that people have um, people or companies have put out based on getting donations and companies putting money into it and so forth, as well as many of the states now are coming out with their own grants for small businesses because they have gotten funding from the federal government, the CARES Act that came out you know, back earlier this year, and these funds are trickling down. It's It's been at the federal level and they, um, They've given monies to the states and the states now are distributing those funds through grants. So again, I'm seeing a lot more um, money coming through the states now as well. There's a few tips that I wanna talk about real quick as well. So if you're applying for these grants, please make sure that one, you're very careful who is helping you. I'm seeing this a lot where they're saying, oh, this guy helped me and here's his number or here's his Instagram handle, all these things. And please, please, please be so careful who you're sharing your financial information with. Make sure that the website looks legit and that you are not just um, trusting anyone to um, handle your um, application and your financial information. You want to make sure that you are the one filling out these grant applications and that you are handling your own financial documents. Um, it's so unfortunate, but I just want everyone to be safe and not to get ripped off by these scammers. So number one is if people are just saying, saying, give me your email and I'll hook you up with some guy who can get you this grant. Please, please, please be so careful with that. And next is um, be aware that the most of the grants I'm seeing that you get awarded, they are likely going to make your name public or your business name public. So just be aware and comfortable with that, that likely you're going to be on some list. You're probably going to be on their website somewhere. Um, publicly um, available that you, uh, you had received that grant. Next is to make sure that you are keeping track of all of the documents, um, keeping track of all of the monies that you were given and where those monies went. Because again, once you've received these grants, oftentimes, if not always, they're going to want to see where you spent the money. So you're going to want to keep a good um, track of that is so that when the time comes that you um, have that information readily available to give them those documents. Okay, so let's dive in real quick here and um, look at what's going on. So I've been keeping a list, um, a rolling list of the grants that I've been looking into, and all of this will be in the um, description box below this video so that you can easily pop into all of these links and, and see these sites so you don't have to be trying to, you know, look at these tiny little URLs and all that stuff. It'll be in the description below so that you can um, easily click on these links and get to them. Um, as I had just said about being careful, um, if, if you are uncomfortable with clicking on these links, that's fine. It's always good to be careful. Um, I'm going to tell you the names of the grants, so then you can also, if you'd like to do your own search with the name, then you can obviously then find the links that way as well. 
So the first one is the EIDL SBA grant. And most people have already heard about this. It came out early this year. And um, for many people, it was a quick um, apply and get the cash, apply and get the grant, um, apply and get the loans, whatever. But for many of us, especially I think some of us sole proprietors, we ended up in the bucket of unverifiable information denial. And so after I got that, I did send in a ton of documents, including a 4506T form. However, I had recently then got an email from them stating I didn't send in the right version of the form, which, okay, whatever. So this link that I'm sharing is the version of the form that they actually sent me. And it looks like this. This is the PDF they sent me. And it already has some things filled in, like 5A says the small business admin. Um, they checked the box over in 6C for record of account. And then they had already filled in the years as well. Now, if you don't file your taxes on a yearly basis, a calendar yearly basis, and you might file your taxes ending in say year end June, then these dates are gonna be different for you because this is based on your year end. And then of course, signing and dating it. So um, again, I'm just wanting to show you that if you are in the bucket, as many of us are for unverifiable information, that this form is something that they're looking for and it has to be this version. There's um, either version September 2018 or March 2019. This is the link that they sent me and then this here is the instruction. So the link to the instructions. So I'm sharing that with you in case you're in the same bucket and you're still going through the cycle of trying to actually have qualified for the grant and loan. I am still just going through the process because from what I was told, they had run out of grant funds for new applicants. So I don't know if I finally get approved, if I'd ever see the grant or I would just get the loan. But again, I'm just gonna go ahead and keep going through the process for that reason, as well as if, not when, but if a another, um, act gets passed and monies go into this program, then this could also be um, a possibility that I'd see the funds that way. So again, I just want to go ahead and stay in the queue in case that happens. Another grant I applied for was called the LISC, L-I-S-C, Lowe's grant. And I believe that that was round six, and I don't think they're having a round seven. And in this application, they said, if you make it to the next round, uh, the next as a finalist for the grant, then you'd be notified. And this was back in September and I never heard anything. I never heard I was a finalist. I never heard that I was not a finalist. So I'm kind of curious if you had heard anything, if you had applied for this as well, um, what kind of feedback you were given. I find it really interesting that they didn't at least acknowledge the people that were denied. But also this site, the LISC itself, continues to run more grants. And so it's always, or it's a good suggestion of mine to get on their mailing list because they will let you know when more grants become available. The next grant that I had applied for was called We're All In Wisconsin. And this was, a, I think, a couple months ago already. And that was now considered round one they're going to be issuing a round two. And anyone who applied for round one is still eligible for round two. So I'm gonna talk more about that in a second. But I stopped here because, uh, or I added this here just to let you know and to kind of um, make a note that, again, th these grants are going to likely want to know where the funds were, um, you, what the funds were used for and maybe some documentation. So please watch your emails and respond to them when they're asking you for those things. Um, I can't see that they would ever um, like ask for the funds back if you don't respond to them, but you know, you're, you're running that risk. So I would definitely recommend that any time they're asking you for updates, do update them. 
the We Are All In Wisconsin Small Business Grant did send out um, requesting some updates. And the, um, the little questionnaire they had was extremely short. So don't hesitate because you think, oh, this is going to take me forever. Um, just jump in there and at least attempt to answer all the questions that they have. And then if you need time for more document documentation, you know, of course, then uh, get that together and then answer those emails. But if, for this one specifically, the very first um, questionnaire that they've sent out so far has been extremely simple. So again, don't be nervous. Just jump in there and get those things taken care of. So let's dive into some of the new ones I've run across. And again, LISC, as I had mentioned before, they're running a new one and it's going to open October 26th. So this one is called the Rural Relief Small Business Grants. And it's for any small business that is considered in a rural area. Okay, population of 50,000 people is not that tiny of a city. So do a little Google search, check to see how many people are in your city, town, village, what have you. And then um, you can pop into the FAQs and more grant information to apply to see if you qualify. But again, they're running it opening October 26th. So you have time. It's starting October 26th and will run through November 2nd. Now, as you can see here, there's going to be more than one round of this. So again, um, this is going to be nice because there's more than one round. And if you miss one, you can always jump into the next. But um, I'll have the links all in the description below so that you can check this out. Again, I would highly suggest that you um, look into this further. If you, even if you kind of think you're in a big city, it might not be as big as you think, given the population of 50,000 people. And again, it's um, they'll tell you a little bit more. Like if it's mobile, it's, it's the address that you're that you're storing the vehicle, or it's probably the address that you considered to be your like home base or something like that and it's going to be in rounds so you can find out more from this link or by searching LISC Rural Relief Small Business Grants and I have the link for you here and this will start October 26th so it, you can't apply for it right this minute but um, these dates are going to come up quick Another new one is the Business for All Hello Alice. So this had ended in September. They're opening it up again, and the new deadline is November 10th. So this is what they call a, the, or they note it as the BFA grant, the Business for All. Okay, and I'm having an issue getting to this link. Okay, so here's the terms and conditions and it basically is telling you all about the grant and the eligibility, but I pointed out that it was the BFA because when you look here, the contest period says November 10th, and it's not the COVID-19 grant, which had already ended. So that's why I specified that it was the BFA grant. And then it just tells you about how you can enter and all of the other specifications about it. And of course, there's the button for apply for a grant. All right, and next is all of these new states that have come up recently. 
So new ones are Delaware, Indiana, Nevada, New York, Tennessee, and again, Wisconsin. And then other ones that I've already come across that are still open are in California, Colorado, Illinois, Kansas, and Texas, as well as a few other ones that are not located in specific states. So for the Delaware one, you can search DE relief grants. Round one is done. Round two is now open. There is no end date given. It just says when the money runs out, that's when they're closing it out. So if you're in Delaware, I would recommend that you apply for this as fast as possible because you just don't know when the money is going to run out. So this is what the site looks like. And again, you can just search um, the Delaware um, DE relief grants. The URL I have is business.delaware.gov backslash relief. The next one is Back on Track Indiana Small Business Restart Fund. So again, Back on Track Indiana Small Business Restart Fund. The deadline for Marion County is November 1st. The deadline for anywhere else in Indiana outside of Marion County is December 1st or until the money is exhausted. So again, these could end sooner if they have a ton of applications come through and they qualify and they, the, the funds go out. It, the deadlines could end sooner or it could actually run later if they still don't have all those funds um, given out. Uh, have enough uh, company or businesses that have applied. So again, this, this link will give you the um, more details about the grant itself. Grants will be issued up to $10,000 per company and issued in the order in which applications are received until the funding is exhausted. So you must be registered in Indiana. You must have less than 50 employees as of the end of last year, had less than $5 million in revenue, been profitable last year, and businesses must demonstrate a monthly revenue loss of at least 40% compared to pre-COVID. Um, the program deadlines, again, are the November 1st and then the December 1st, but and or until funds are exhausted, and then the button for the application. So if you're in Indiana, you'll want to check that out for more information. The next one is in Nevada. So Nevada um, is the Pandemic Emergency Technical Support Grant, PETS grant. So you can search Pandemic Emergency Technical Support, P-E-T-S grant in Nevada. This one opens in a couple of days, October 19th, and it'll close out November 2nd. So you have the, there's a news article that I found and you can look at, at the news article if you wish. And then also here's what the site is going to look like, the pandemic emergency technical support and um, the application starts um, October 19th. And so then once it opens, then there'll be a button to where you can apply. There's also some video tutorials, so you could watch that in advance just so that you kind of get an idea of what you're going to need when you apply. Now, I also have another link for Nevada, and this, I believe, is just a more um, general link that will give you any of the grants that are available. So there's an Actors Fund, a Gen Youth, uh, federal grants that are available and just a plethora of information and other grants that you might find useful. So Henderson Recovery Grant, round two opens the 10th, it's ongoing local opportunities. So there's just a plethora of other ones that you might be interested in, again, if you're in Nevada. New York grant information. So um, the one that I found recently was called Erie County Back to Business Grant Program. So again, Erie County. And this is the link here. And so the site looks like this.
Erie County Back to Business Grant Program. And you can apply now and you can read all of this extra information to see if you would be eligible for that grant. And then see the full grant pro program terms. You can click on that. How can you spend the money? It's gonna let you know how you can spend the money. And there's an apply now button. So that's only in Erie County, New York. However, there are a couple other links here that I've um, shared, and these are a little bit more um, general. Again, grants that are available for New York residents, New York small businesses. So you've got the Economic Recovery and COVID-19 Loans for Small Businesses. And so these are um, some loan funds. They talk about the SBA, PPP, and all that good stuff. So it's just a good reference if you're looking for assistance in New York. And then there's also this link here. Again, the Empire State Development website guidance and information for New Yorkers, businesses related to COVID. And they've got some guidance here. And some economic recovery and COVID loans and assistance, uh, just some other information that you might find useful. But again, this other one here is the Erie County um, grant information. Next date is Tennessee. It's called the Tennessee Supplemental Employer Recovery Grant Program, SERG. And the deadline for this is December 29th or until funds are depleted. So again, it could run past December 19th if not enough people apply and use up the funds or it could go quick. So I would recommend if you're in Tennessee and you want to apply for this grant, look into it and apply sooner rather than later in case the funds run out quicker than the December deadline. It says business owners can use the calculator to determine their estimated benefit. Um, awards are capped at $30,000. However, businesses located in low to moderate income, census tracts, uh, opportunity zones, or promise zones will receive an additional $500 added to the maximum allow allowable expenses. So it sounds like it's a pretty nice uh, grant and the link to apply is right here. So again, they're gonna ask you for quite a bit of information. So if you're applying for a lot of grants, I would highly suggest you keep all that information in one place, you know, likely on your computer or whatever in a folder so that you can easily keep referring back to all of those things and making sure that um, all of your documents that you are sending out or attaching to these applications, what have you, that they're all labeled really well as well. So what they are, your name, business name, what have you, so that when they look quickly at that link, that, that add-on, whether it's a PDF or whatever, that they can quickly see who, what it is and who it belongs to. So again, that's Tennessee's. So if you're in Tennessee, you can look up the Tennessee Supplemental Employer Recovery Grant Program. Okay, so the last of the new ones that I've come across is in Wisconsin. It's the We're All In Wisconsin Small Business Grant, and this is gonna be round two. And it's gonna open up Monday on the 19th. And even if you already got received round one funds, you can apply for round two. So don't hesitate or um, if you're worried about that or you're not sure about that, it's, it states it in here that if you did receive round one, you can still apply for round two. And again, I'm trying to see if there's anything very pertinent that I should point out other than it ends November 2nd. And it says um, it is not on a first come first serve. So they are reviewing the, the applications as they come in and they, and then uh, as, uh, sorry, I'm trying to hurry as fast as I can because some people don't like that these videos are taking a long time, but this is a lot of information to go through. So I'm trying to keep it brief, but I'm also trying to, <laughs> give you as much detail as possible. 
Businesses that received funds under the first round of We're All In, as well as the Ethnic Minority Emergency Grant, are also eligible for the second round. So again, you can apply again. Priority will be given to businesses that have not previously received the funds. And um, they also give um, preferences to ethnically diverse ownership and those hardest hit. So a lot of these grants are like that. They're for small businesses and they are um, taking into account if you're woman owned, minority owned, and just other things like that. They're taking those also into account in many of the grants um, as far as who gets picked first to get the, to be a recipient. So just keep that in mind as well. And another thing to keep in mind is that some of them, the, some of these grants, you have to have at least two employees. So it eliminates anyone who's a sole proprietor. If they, um, if one of the rules is you have to have at least two employees, um, then if you're applying, if you're a business of one, then you don't qualify. But other of these loans, like the we're all in Wisconsin, you can be a sole proprietor. You can be a business of one and still receive these grants. So don't let that deter you to apply um, if you do qualify. Just something to look out for. Okay, these are ones that I've already covered in prior videos, but I'm going to let you know just because they are still available and if you hadn't heard of it before, you can um, apply. So there's one called Central San Diego, Black Chamber of Commerce, and right now it looks like they are trying to um, receive more funds, get more donations. So at some point they are going to do a grant as far as what I can read on their site, but it doesn't look like they've raised the million dollars yet. Again, this would be something I would just go ahead and if you're in that area and you're looking for grants to keep an eye on this because at some point it looks like they're going to do a grant, offer grants, and so this would be a great one to keep an eye on for. Again, it looks like they're um, attempting to raise a million dollars and then do the grant. Central San Diego Black Chamber of Commerce. Okay, and there's a news article here if you'd like to read it. You can also email them. Um, so that's some great information there. The next one is the state of Colorado. It's called Energize Colorado Gap Fund Grant and Loan Opportunity. So there's a grant that's up to 15,000 and then a loan up to $20,000. Round one has closed, but round two opened October 5th and the deadline is October 26th. So you still have time to apply for this gap fund. And again, if you don't wanna click on the links I have, I understand just search Colorado, Energize Colorado Gap Fund. Round two applications are open until the 26th and here's the big button to apply now. And of course they have tons of other information so that you can find out whether or not you qualify to apply. Illinois, COVID grants. There's an article here that you can read. And then as well as here is the application. Now it says that it's on a rolling basis. So here we go again. There's no deadline per se. They're just gonna keep pumping out these funds until they run out of money. So if you're in Illinois and you wanna apply for this, I would do it sooner rather than later. Business Interruption Grants Program, BIG. And they have applications in English and Spanish. And then um, there's a ton more information that you can read about the um, applications. So they have application questions, checklist, forms in English and Spanish, um, guidance and technical assistance, just, um, just a plethora of information. So again, if you're in Illinois, you're a small business and you're looking for a grant, I would check this one out the Business Interruption Grants Program out of the Illinois Department of Commerce. Next is Kansas, Topeka, Kansas. And again, I've got an article here you could read if you'd like. And then the site itself 
It's for low to moderate income. Women owned and or minority owned are given a preference and the grants are up to $20,000 each. So you're not gonna automatically get the $20,000. If it says up to, that means that they determine based on your business and your needs and where you're located and all of those things, then the maximum that your, your grant would be is $20,000. It started October 1st, and they're gonna be accepted continuously until the funds have depleted. Again, we're hearing this a lot, until funds are depleted. So again, there's no deadline per se. So the sooner you get your application in, the better. And again, you can just search topeka.org and then small business grant. So like I had talked about a business of one, employed between one and 25 persons. So employed one person is if you are a sole proprietor, you employ yourself, that's it. So that's one of the things that I would highly suggest you look at if you are a sole proprietor. You may not uh, qualify for some grants if it says two or more. But uh, as you see, this one says one to 25. So then um, grant funds can be put towards the following expenses and they give you a list of types of things that you can spend the money on and the application. So you can see then there's your button to apply. And I'm sure that they have uh, much, much more information if you want to read through it in the FAQ. So again, this is for Topeka, and this is the grant program that they're running in Topeka, Kansas. Okay, so Texas is the last state on my list right now, and there is a um, the various Texas locations for the LIFT fund. So again, you can search Texas LIFT fund, L-I-F-T, and they have a website here that just goes into a plethora of things. And some of these have already ended. Some of these come into um, second and third rounds. So if you're in this location and it's ended, I would keep an eye on it, do some more searching because like I said, they might end up with a round two or a round three and then um, they'll come back open. The El Paso, Texas deadline is October 16th. So that's actually today at 5 p.m. Um, Mountain Time. So I'm really sorry if this is coming to you this late. This is probably the only one I've got that's like a really, okay, today is the deadline. But again, if you're in El Paso, um, this is the City of El Paso Small Business Recovery Grant Program. And um, they actually updated it today is, um, application deadline is rolling into funds are exhausted on or before November 30th. So there you go. Now they're saying um, they're extending the deadline as of today. And now you can apply until November 30th or until um, funds are exhausted. So it's it's incredible how these things just keep changing. So again, um, if, even if there's one that has come, it looks like you missed the deadline, check because they might extend the deadlines. So for independent contractors and sole proprietors, that's if you're a business of one, you would apply here. And then the grant awards are up to $25,000. Um, grant documentation is, so it's telling you all the things you're gonna need, how to apply and all of that good stuff. And so there's a nice long checklist. And again, it said up here, if you're a, a sole proprietor to apply at this little tab here, as opposed to down here, this button here. So just pay attention to that but I'm gonna add this little snippet of information here. Bear with me one second because I wanna update my paper or my form, my document. And then there is the Perland Grant Program and that one is going to end the 26th. So you've got your City of Perland Small Business Recovery uh, Grant Program, and that's again part of the LIFT fund, and you can find out more information about this fund as well.
and it tells you about the application process, the deadlines, and all of that good stuff, and the button to apply. And again, that one is the Perland Grant Program out of Texas. Now here's just a few little um, ones that I've talked about um, before, but if you go to ifundwomen.com slash WOC, there's a plethora of information for um, women of color, as they say. So it's the I Fund Women of Color Funding, Grants, Crowdfunding, Coaching, and Connections. And there's the link here if you're interested in popping over to that site and looking at the plethora of other information that they provide and the programs that they have. I've also talked about TikTok and Facebook, and I know that these can be a bit controversial, but I'm sharing it because if you want to know about it, at least you know about it. So for TikTok, they have the, this ads program. It's called TikTok Back to Business Program, and they offer um, $300 of ad spend money for their platform. I um, played around with this and they did not, I did not have to give any financial documents. I didn't have to give them any credit card information. I did not have to put any money into ads myself. Um, I just had the $300 um, ad um, grant, as I guess you'd put it, or, uh, and that money was available to use towards ad spend. Um, it wasn't an actual monetary gain, um, like monetary money is put into my bank account. It was just um, on the platform. So just to be aware of that there, um, they kind of make it seem like you need to match it dollar for dollar, which they do have a program for as well. But for this program, it was just like the $300 um, granted in ad spend. Um, so I just want to kind of put that out there because it kind of makes you feel like you're, you have to put a credit card in or you have to um, put your own ad money spend in there and you don't. So just to know that um, so that you can feel comfortable in knowing that you should not have to actually um, spend any of your own monies to use that grant. The Facebook Small Business Grants Program has um, eliminated many countries, including now the USA is excluded, Canada's excluded, Colombia was excluded, and now there, I think there's a few more uh, countries that have now been excluded from the site. It says um, that it's been exhausted or whatever terminology they use, but um, if you are located in other countries outside the US, Canada, Colombia, and a few others, there may be grants that you can tap into. This may not be monetary. It may just be um, grant, uh, ad spend grants. But again, if you are located outside of um, the US and Canada, you can pop in here. And basically, if you scroll down, it has this little, how do I apply? And then you can look at certain countries and it'll say, sorry, no longer accepting applications, or maybe there might be uh, one where it says learn more, and then you would click here. So if you're outside the United States and Canada, you can pop into this little thing and see if they offer it in the country where you are located. But I think this keeps changing, so I'm not going to try to give you a long list of which countries it is. It's hard to say. It they. I think that they're trying to um, partner up with other countries to, um, to offer some of these. So again, it's just something you can pop into if you're interested. Facebook for Business, they are um, sometimes offering um, certain grants, and so it's something you can just check into. Okay. So that was a long, arduous list. I hope that some of this, at least, if not all of it, you found useful. Um, I hope that um, you're finding the grants that you need based on where you're located. Um, there is an article here that I'll share again. Um, it talks a little bit about some extra tips for a small business um, making it through COVID. And um, you might find that useful. Another tip is to use Google search as well as Google alerts that you can set up. So if you go to google.com forward slash alerts, you can set it up 
so you could um, do small business and then wherever you're located and it'll send you alerts when those trigger words come up in postings on the internet and it would kind of help you so you're not always searching for grants in your location but it'll alert you when when postings come up of grants in your location or say um, you are specific type of industry um, things like that then you can use those keywords to do a Google alerts and have Google just email you when um, a list of whatever has popped up on the internet based on your search again I hadn't heard anything new about the EIDL except for twice now they've asked me to resend the 4506 form which I've done and then um, the last thing is just to ask you um, if you would um, subscribe to this channel and if you did find this video useful give me a thumbs up a like and that's always appreciated um, this the whole document again will be added to the description below this video as well as you can see here some of these have ended but again if you're in these locations um, there might be round more rounds coming available so it's always a good idea to keep those um, sort of in your bookmarks or what have you just in case so wow whew, take a breath <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you find the grants and the other support that you need during this pandemic. I know it's rough. I know it's hard. I know many people are now home trying to um, uh, have their kids learning from home and you're working from home and you're doing everything from home and going kind of stir crazy from home, especially with winter coming now. And so I just want to say, you know, we're I feel you. I feel for you. I know that this is tough and I hope that again you get not only the monetary support that you need but the community support you need that you don't feel alone. Uh, everybody's feeling the stress from time to time. Um, enjoy the beauty in life. Um, right now we're in fall season and it's gorgeous outside. The trees have changed all these colors. It's beautiful. So um, just uh, take a deep breath um, uh, and do the best you can. And I hope that you are well. Um, come back to this channel for more updates and other things more related to the transcription services. I'm going to try to do more videos based on that um, business as well, which is a home-based business, a way to make money from home. Um, doing transcription. So I hope to get some more videos out on that as well. But I'll continue to do these videos about grants as I see them come up. So thank you so much again for being here. I appreciate everyone for subscribing and liking and commenting. Um, stay safe and take care and see you again. Bye.